Meeting to order is uh, 702. Uh, the me meeting is duly constituted, a quorum is present, <coughs> and the first order on the agenda is approval of the agenda. May I have a motion? Thanks, and a second. Um, I have several items that need to be added. Um, I'll go through them one by one. Under 8A4, CAO verbal update regarding website. I'll just take it on the nod as we go along and then we'll take a resolution at the end. Everybody good with that one? And then under 8C1, resident wishing to subdivide. And then under 8D4, committees, uh, bylaw and policy review committee verbal report. All good so far? And then under 10A, uh, change from adoption to third reading. Yes, good. I was wondering about that. Carl, for um, the subdivide, is that the email that I'd sent? I don't know, Peter, this is your item, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yes, it is. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so. I've been coached on that one. <coughs> what to say? Fine. Okay. Good. Okay, so you can take that one. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Peter's introduction, but uh, <coughs> you can speak to it, or we can all speak to it. 10C, uh, new item bylaw notice enforce, enforcement bylaw number 385 of 2006, amendment bylaw number 507 of 2016, first, second, and third reading. So that, that ties into the tree bylaw stuff? Yes, but didn't we do first, second, and third last meeting? No, no. This is this is for the penalties that go with the tree bylaw. Okay. It's not the bylaw enforcement officer stuff, which okay. is al which is already on there the too agenda. Too many bylaws with the word bylaw <laughs> in their <laughs> title <laughs> or amendment. Okay, uh, fine. So everybody got that. We'll do get it when we get there. Eleven <clears throat> B additional correspondence. Eleven C correspondence table from the June twenty first meeting. That's in your on-table package, and it's the one to do with um, the train, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Yeah. The train and uh, and UBC. And the latest on the other topic of the two. Okay, fine. <clears throat> and the final one is that we add an item 14. I th you thought we would just, when it was safe to go out in the water, closed <clears throat> uh, council meeting under section 91C. And then and another additional number 15 reporting out. And then adjournment becomes number 16. The 91C, for everyone's information, is labor relations. Okay. Okay. Um, Fred? Yeah, can I add one under new business? Um, let's call it wood for now. Call that time. Wood? Wood. Wood. Very cryptic. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> And oh, I have one. If under unfinished business, let's call it um, post Canada Day. Okay. And I have, I don't know where you're going to put it, probably under new business, I suppose. I, I, I'd like to have a discussion amongst the council table about parking regulations and how we're going to deal with the parking things in certain areas because I'm starting to get noise from my neighbors and we got a ticket. You got a ticket? Not a ticket, but we got a warning ticket for parking in front of our hedge on our, our street okay. on the pavement. We got told not to park okay. on the pavement and I'm thinking... Or a parking by line. So that'll yeah, be new business. Line. Yeah. This so that'll business. be under 12 yeah. uh, and then there was one. 12B that will be, yes. And what are we calling this? Park, parking rights. Okay. It's already been taken care of. Oh, no, it's, no, it's I, a good I'm way. sure, but that's fine. I just wanted to yep, yep, brave yep, it. Yep. And we'll come up with that over later. Okay, that's enough amendment. <laughs> yeah. Any more? No. Okay, so all in favor of the agenda as amended and opposed, that carries. Public participation. Do we have? No? We'll move on to delegations. There being none, we'll move on to the minutes. And the approval of the minutes of the meeting of June 22nd as circulated. Um, 
Comments? I had no chances. No issues. Jim? I'm just trying to remember what was that. It was right here, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and, um, item number 7A, um, ID 60, any encroachment marketing to be dealt with in larger context of comprehensive any encroachment policy. I don't remember that conversation going that way. We talked about this. I remember the con that part of it. Mm -hmm. I thought that what we were talking about at the time was we talked about this issue we've got in the village of anti encroachment with the with the the roadways all over the place and mm -hmm. people's hedges on here and there and right. property gone away. But I got the impression from our conversation what we're talking about is some way of of letting people know that eventually the village is going to be dealing with that as we as we do road repair work and stuff like that, but we're not really gonna be starting to 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 really put our foot down and say there is no encroachment because we can't do that right now. We yeah, this was very much in the context of the IRRs and handling the IRRs, but now that you say that, didn't we say we were going to do some initial mentions of, of encroachment but sensitivity? I, I can always grab my notes just to see exactly what I've got down. But, I just don't but remember. My, my, my recollection of, of what I view this as is more or less because I'm, I'm working on doing a, a much more comprehensive any encroachment policy. Okay. So in terms of rolling that out to the community, that's when we would say, um, you know, I guess marketing of the policy more or less is just like, you know, these are the things, these are the things, that, the issues that we have. These are, you know, this is the new policy in terms of how we're going to approach this going forward. Um, and like you say, it may be that certain things won't be addressed until such time as we're ripping up that particular road and then we give people notice that, hey, next year we're going to be doing that and uh, we've got uh, an, uh, encroachment uh, covenants with three out of the five that are an issue, the other two uh, are historical and we have to figure out what to do with them, but we put people on notice um, ahead of that work being done. That's sort of how I sort of see that all rolling out. But as long I think as the marketing component long as it's is, consultative. Yeah, I think the marketing component is, is, is the consultative I just, piece. I just read that and I thought, yeah. ah! You know, yeah. I just had a conversation with one of my neighbors about that, yeah. and I'm thinking, no, 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 we don't yeah. want that. And no, we're not, we're not going to say, here's the new law, and no, 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 no. I, dump I it just, on somebody's head. I just wanted to have that conversation yeah. to make sure yeah. that I wasn't... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah, I mean, specifically in terms of discussion around the resource request, I believe that's a fair representation of the discussion. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the larger question is obviously different, yeah. but that's what that was. I remember, so, I remember raising some concerns about that at the mm -hmm. time, that's all. So, right. okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the request was, should we start an anti-encroachment marketing campaign in the IRR? And the answer is no, because it's going to be dealt with. So I think that's a fair representation of, okay. of the discussion. Good. Everybody good there? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'll have a few things arising, but uh, I think it's a fair reflection of the meeting. So anything else? So a uh, motion to adopt the minutes and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed, that carries unanimously. Business arising. I, I had one or two things. Under, uh, this is more a, a, a formatting thing again, Peter. Under mm -hmm. 8B, uh, Mayor Burr provided a brief update on various items. It would be useful to know what those were because I didn't take notes. <coughs> Can we have a brief list yeah. in future, not for now? Yeah, yeah, we ended up with a bit more of a detail regarding Councillor McLaughlin's brief update, but. I don't know what happened. And Councillor yeah. and Cam and Councillor Bain, so it's just you by yourself. Well <laughs> maybe I had too many <laughs> updates. I don't know. I, or too little. I, yeah, I, I take your point. Yeah, I mean it, you know, this is the record of the discussion, not only uh, you know, we're sort of we're trying to find a sweet spot between mm -hmm. uh, exhaustive detail and, mm -hmm. and simply listing decisions. Yep. Uh, it would have been useful to know what that was. Mm -hmm. um, under nine the res I know the resolution's been done already, but uh, would it not be a good idea to also put a couple of posters up on our new notice boards? <coughs> yeah, we could do that. I know that's going to be external to the resolution, which was, mm -hmm. it was a judge at the email. But if we really want people to actually see it and comment on it, a couple of posters, here's a chance to whack out some posters on our new boards. Mm -hmm. New boards without a poster printer, but with a budget. And... Um, I just wanted to check up with you on number 11, the correspondence. Uh, have we spoken to Vancouver Coastal Health yet about changing the wording of their letter? Yes. And their reaction was? Uh, amenable. 
Great. Good. Anybody else? Business arising? Anyway. Sorry? We got that back, didn't we? We did get it back. I should have brought that. It's going to be, well, it'll come to council at, um, as correspondence. Next time? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So just, just to remind, in case we've yeah. forgotten, uh, I objected to the word uh, improving our water quality because our water quality is, is, is meets the standards. So the word I wanted there was maintaining, I think, right? Um, yeah, maintaining the, there, are, yeah. Yeah. It, it, maintaining is one of the words that, that was uh, used, not improving. Yeah, okay. Anybody else? Right, we'll move on then to item number uh, seven, unfinished business. I have post Canada Day. Thank you, and uh, thank you, uh, Carl, uh, for an excellent job on Canada Day. Uh, the last thing remaining from Canada Day is the hall dedication, the honoring of the pending retiring librarians and the citizen of distinction who was asked for health purposes. And the opportunity would be from Labor Day <coughs> to the end of the second or third week of September. So my ask, I know this could go on an IRR, Peter, but it's uh, the ask is, I don't know what the hall booking is and stuff like that, so if staff could come up with two dates for next meeting and we'll say yay or nay on that. Two dates. In, say, from Labor Day till uh, 19, 18, 17, 16th of September, if it works. I mean, I, I'm not stuck on those dates, but the longer we... And let's do a nice, let's do a reception. A, a, a something, so... Yeah, let's do something more than just uh, an unveiling of a pl of, uh, of the well, nameplate above the door. Well, if they, uh, certainly the <coughs> Broughton family is large, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the librarians are large, so I think it's probably going to be... Yeah, I think a nice reception would be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So first, first, half first half of September. First half is the most, because I think we now know there's some holiday issues here. Okay. And medical issues. Yep. Yeah, right. So we'll, um, if, if you could come back, with, it can be internal, it doesn't have to be. Yep. Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, of course, we need to also uh, finalize the design of the name, name plate, name, name plaque as well. I mean, my thinking off, off the top of my head is, you know, something fairly sub significant, <coughs> you know, brass, bronze. I do recommend that you take charge of this, Carl. Well, I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll, well, I'll sort of send my, my thinking to Peter. Yeah, I'm thinking sort of, you know, yay high, three inches high, four inches high, and four feet long. Well, you can, yeah. you, we can mark one and look at it. Yeah, or exactly, that's good. Bronze, that's good. Uh, yeah. We'll provide you with... Uh, mock-up and design work if you tell them what you wanted to say. And Who's that, sorry? Ornamental bronze. Okay. Vancouver? Um, I believe so. Uh, they're the ones we use for our uh, memorial bench plaques. Yeah, okay. Uh, just so that Carl doesn't step on any toes. Who's, who's doing this piece? Well, we'll do it as, as Thank long you. as you tell us. What, what I have in mind? Yep. <coughs> or what we have in mind? Yep. Well, <coughs> Okay. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Okay. Good stuff. Anybody else? Um, okay. So that's that for unfinished business reports. Staff. Nine. Page nine. Which one first? Uh, let's do the one in order. Vinyl wrapping. The vinyl wrapping. Um, so the uh, the Bayview PRV is a temporary PRV that was installed by staff uh, to try to further the use of mag water. Um, and to improve the, the water quality on either side of a normally closed valve, that um, the, the pressure station is situated right on the edge of a boundary, <coughs> a closed valve, and uh, sediment and water quality deteriorates at the end of those uh, dead ends. Uh, the IMP has recommended, uh, because of fire flows, that that be converted into a permanent station. Uh, which will necessitate a, a large fire flow valve, a 150 millimeter valve, um, and that will be housed in an underground chamber. So with respect to the vinyl wrapping, you know, we could go ahead and do it, uh, but we're applying for federal funding, grant funding, uh, and hopefully we'll get it. If that's the point, if that's the case, then, then the vinyl wrapping becomes moot. So the box will disappear. <coughs> the box will disappear. Well, that's good because, frankly, I don't like that box. I think it's a little close to the road edge, uh, as I'm sure you would, wouldn't dispute that. So it, good. So we're talking about an in-ground bolt and and the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, and if we don't get funding at that point, I can bring it back to council for more decision or discussion. That's a whole different topic. The issue here was around the vinyl wrapping. So we see the price is 24, 2,500 bucks in rounds numbers. Is that a competitive yeah. uh, uh, hold the feet to the fire type of number? No, no. They would have to come out, and it, it depends on the the number of, of angles and yeah. you know shelves yeah. in the door and. You know whether it has louvers or not, etc. They'd have to come out and measure it specifically. Yeah. This is just a rough estimate. Okay, I think it's somewhat academic, though, right? I think. Well, it's a it's an ex hydro vault, is it not? Yes. They're usually pretty darn substantial. The, the boxes yeah, it's themselves. It's just ugly as sin. Yeah. And well, yeah. Was to no, put that's some, fine. That's yeah. But if it's temporary, let's not let's save the keep our powder dry for some <coughs> other box that's not temporary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good. Everybody. Good with that? So uh, the recommendation is we receive the report. Can I have that uh, motion and a second? Any further discussion? Seeing none, call the question. All in favor of receipt and opposed, that carries. Okay, thanks, Nai. Good stuff. Uh, next one. Road sweeping. So um, the, uh, the village sweeper is a, is a hydraulic attachment that's attached to the Bobcat loader bucket. And essentially, the broom spins and sweeps debris into the loader bucket, and it's dumped at the at the workshop. The cost for a uh, a vacuum sweeper truck, which is essentially the same, it uh, brushes all the material to the middle of the truck, and a vacuum is used to suck the material up. Um, they also use jets of water to help dislodge material. So a vacuum sweeper uh, it will cost you. Um, 60. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, 1404 so. per occurrence versus our uh, Bobcat sweeper at 560. Okay, thanks. So, I mean, we've read this report. I have two questions for you and I. Yeah. The first is you're, we're taking into account the fact that the sweeper runs faster and so it won't use as many hours as the Bobcat sweeper, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. 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 So it'd be quicker, um, but at a rate that's three times the price. And the second was, I hadn't this. Every time I've seen the Bobcat sweeper in use, it's just been brushing the stuff off to the side. Okay. It hasn't actually been putting it into a into a bucket. No. So it, that makes a difference. I yeah. didn't even realize we could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously, I don't need to tell you. Is you brush it off to the side, it comes straight it comes back, back again. onto the road. That's yeah. the direction of the sweeper, so what really boils down to. Yeah, but I mean, track. every time I've seen it in use before, it was just brushing it off yeah, to the side, right. but not brushing it, taking it away. So the whole idea behind, I didn't realize we could do that. So I, mean, I think I'm fine with that, as long as we take the stuff away. Now, admittedly, the Bobcat's broom is this wide. Yeah. That's about all we need. Yeah. Because cars clear the rest of the road. Yeah. 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 Unless, do we want to try a vacuum sweeper once and see what the result is? What do I think? would. What's your you recommend? One, right? Yeah, I would recommend keeping um, the work internal. Yeah, for <coughs> other good reasons too. My only proviso there is okay. Let's do that, but then let's use the the proper the, the hopper in the front. Yeah. Okay. Which may be slower, to be honest, but okay. Okay, so um, there's a recommendation. Yes, so the recommendation <coughs> is that staff continue to perform street sweeping work in-house using Lions Bay equipment and crews. Uh, can I have that motion and a second? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Good. Thanks, Nye. Good stuff. And the last one, refurbished notice boards. So uh, staff have uh, gone out as directed and refurbished the <coughs> notice boards. Uh, there are before and after pictures. Um, there is a balance of 1100 in the budget for this amount, or for this item. Uh, and in <coughs> keeping with a, a discussion uh, regarding a, a, a village notice board or notice center, um, there is an option to purchase a um, a glass enclosed or encased cabinet that can be mounted and put not in the triangle area, the little patch between the handrails, but in the grass area. Why not in the triangles? The triangle. The, the way that the walls were poured, 
the footing extends out into that triangle area. So if we remove that bark mulch, there's actually a concrete blob under there. So you couldn't use that to mount it. Hammer. Sorry, no, it's yeah. We'd have to jackhammer it apart. We could uh, mount it on the face of the wall by bracketing it to the wall. Um, but if you're walking up and your hand is on the handrail, yeah. there's very little clearance. It's a pinch. Yeah, the only reason I would consider the, the triangle is because it's pretty ugly as it stands. It's like a two minute walk. Can we do that? Sure. You can do anything in that space, but the, the, amount, of, the amount of mounting that's required for that signage isn't substantial. I mean, it's not a real structural deal. No. Just it's, just wind, like it's just really wind resistance. The, the only problem with putting it into that triangle area that's full of nothing is that in order to get power to it, because I assume we mm -hmm. want the, the mm -hmm. cabinet lift, yeah. we yeah. would have to that go underneath yeah. the wall. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, you, you still want to go forward? No, I like clinched that one. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, well then, uh, and we're talking about the big one, the 43 by 100? That's right, yeah. What's this table? No, sorry, the 43 by 100 is just the 38 by 5 by 29 with the with, posts. With the posts. Yeah, I'm proposing that we just uh, use existing posts. Oh, I see. You have and, and oh, I see. Yeah, okay. okay. Even better. Yeah. So Let's it, get two. It would be the 450. And, and you would hardwire the lighting? Yes. Yeah. So uh, we would only be able to do one this year. Um, <coughs> the message board delivered, etc. 500 bucks, 100 bucks for the lighting, uh, and then probably about 300 for installation, digging the post holes, running the cable, putting the wire in, etc. And this would replace the official notice board outside the front door, I take that's, it. That's the idea, yeah. yeah. And it would fit our future yet to come uh, sign design protocol. It's 38 long, 29 high. So it makes a maximum sign up. I, I don't know if it would fit a future protocol, but it's really if it's a future glass protocol, glass. I haven't seen it. Glass. Well, it's a future one, that's why I haven't seen it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, it's in the future. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, it's going to back it's to the meet that protocol. I'm supportive. Okay, good. Um, so, uh, there's a recommendation now, I believe. Oh, it's just to receive. Uh, let's, do, uh, let's do a motion to receive and... Uh, direct staff to install uh, the notice board as as reported. Thank you. As recommended. Yeah? So put forward. Thank you. And a second? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That carries two. That's great. Um, we're getting there. Thanks, Nye. Okay, moving on to 8.4, the insertion <coughs> CA verbal <coughs> update re-website. Um, yeah, actually, just before I get into that, there was one thing that I was going to uh, just mention very briefly is um, we're looking at doing a little bit of extra tree trimming over and above the uh, amount that was budgeted for eighty nine hundred, but we'll just we'll just find it in the operations. There's a list of high, medium, and low priority things that uh, sort of took it took it up. You know, if it was all three, you know, if we even did the low priority things, it'd be like seventeen grand, but. For an extra three grand, we can hit the high and the medium. So we'll just we're just going to go ahead and do that under the operational budget. Okay. Now, any of these well-loved uh, <coughs> uh, sort of <coughs> I don't call them heritage trees, but but the, heirloom uh, trees. The uh, the work that's planned at the Lions Bay Beach Park is to um, foster the health of the trees. So it's not going to be any removal. Uh, there's, there'll be some branch trimming and some pruning. Uh, to remove <coughs> dead branches and branches that are, are susceptible to falling. Okay, that's important to communicate. I can put that in the mayor's piece, but I think we also want to do something. This is perhaps even a poster candidate. You know how we talked about works, putting up a, a poster saying what the work is coming, when's mm -hmm. it coming, cost, and why? Mm -hmm. This would be an ideal opportunity because there will be an outcry uh, unless it's very well established why work is being done. Um, especially down at the beach. Sure. Yeah. So, let's uh, let's think through what the communications piece. Is Where right? would the you're talking about? We're now talking about putting it on the notice boards around the village. No. no? What we would, uh, what I envision as part of the capital is similar to what um, West Van does, which is put up by a uh, just a two by four with a 
um, chloroplast sign that mm -hmm. identifies capital work mm -hmm. and what the work is and a phone number for complaints mm -hmm. uh, and information. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a communications opportunity as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's, it's not to try and uh, deflect criticism. It's to it's No, I, I, my point is as yeah. long as people are aware of it and they see it and if yeah. they're concerned, they'll know what to do about it. Yes. That's fine. That's yeah, good. good. No, that's great. Okay, that's, that's a good protocol to get uh, in the habit of and this is an easy one. So, did you need a resolution on that, Peter? Or are you just no, going to no, do it administratively? Just, no, just information? Go good. ahead and do that. Yeah, okay. just, just to let you know what's going on. Um, and then in terms of the website project that's moving forward, I'm going to have an initial project review meeting tomorrow. And um, so we'll map out the, the timelines and the plan and, and the design work and the consultation process. Um, initially, you know, sort of roughly speaking, we're probably looking at launching first week of November-ish. So, but I'll have a better idea on that by the end of tomorrow. Um, that's it for that. Good, thank you. And my only request there, of course, is as always that uh, that searchability of records is one of the mm -hmm. prime sort of back room, back yeah. engine <coughs> things using optical character recognition or yep. whatever. But you know they're ready. Yep. Good. Okay, anything else on that? Thanks, Peter. So uh, we don't need a motion to <coughs> accept a verbal <coughs> report. No. Okay. So uh, that's it for the 8As. So we'll now move on to 8B. There's nothing from the Mayor. Uh, 8C Council 1. Ron? Resident wishing to subdivide. Uh, I've uh, talked to uh, Peter about this and uh, the property has some interesting possibilities. Uh, he has a viewpoint as well too and Council will know our desire on uh, large properties. And the recommendation is Peter contacts the residents, which he's advised he will this week. Okay, good. Uh, I think we all got that email. It was from a resident. Subdivision, as we know, is an administrative issue. It's not a resolution of council. However, at the moment, we don't have a subdivision by law or a zoning by that allows for the, the, the kind of subdivision being contemplated. So it is a bigger project that will come before <coughs> council. Right, Peter? Yep. But, um, uh, and I think the emphasis is that the CAO uh, would We'll be in contact this week. People are very keen to move. Yeah, we'll talk about process and okay. we'll get in touch with them. Thank you. Yeah, now, okay, so could we do that as an ad hoc uh, zoning change? Um, potentially, but I, I really kind of need to look at it much closer and yeah. see what we're looking at. And there may be aspects of it that... Um, will require some careful consideration. So Yeah, uh, I, I'm assuming that we actually want to do it once we've gone through the public hearing process and, and heard what the village has to say. I don't need to remind us that we have m multiple subdivision opportunities <coughs> that people are talking about, but they haven't been able to do it administratively because it, it requires a zoning change in every case. There's a, a caution to exp expediting quickly with this kind of stuff, and I agree with Peter that it needs to be looked at really closely first mm -hmm. and very carefully, and then we can decide from there. So, yep. yeah, yep. makes sense. No arguments. Okay, good. So, thanks, Ron. Is that it? Yep. Uh, we'll move on to 8D committee reports, first being the tree committee, the draft minutes of June 1st meeting on page 17. Ron, this is your. Uh, yes, it's blistering my shirt as one can expect from the tree committee. Uh, and this one, which is, uh, see that the application is there. And on page 21, there's the culprit right there. Uh, and, uh, this, and basically the recommendation of once through the re like regulatory stuff that the subject can be removed. No trees are talking, all the trees are removed. Uh, and I would put that motion forward. Thanks. So we're looking at this picture. Which tree is it? One dead center. The one dead in the middle? Yeah. Uh, and the resident will pay? Yes. To absorb all the costs, including yeah. removal? Cleaning up the whole thing. Take, taking away? Going, going, going. Okay, we could talk about more about the details when we talk about the tree bylaw later in the package, but 
Okay, so you have that recommendation. Is that it? That's the only one here. Okay, we need a motion on that one. So can I have a motion? So, so just we kind of jumped past the minutes into the application. Oh, sorry, you're quite right. So maybe we'll just get rid of the minutes first. Okay. Receive. And then so receive, yeah. <coughs> uh, that, is that a motion, Ron? Yes. Thanks. And can I have a second to receive the minutes of the committee meeting? Thanks. Any further discussion? And accelerating to where we were before. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a vote on that one. All in favor of receipt of the minutes and opposed, that carries. Now back to where we were, uh, there's a recommendation to approve the application from you to Phillips. Uh, it's before you, you've seen it in the package. Can I have a motion and a second? Any further discussion? Which tree are we talking about, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> the one that sticks out like a sword. The one in the dead center? Okay, got it. Uh, any further discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor and opposed? That carries. Also unanimously. Uh, to page 29. Yes. Uh, this is uh, if council could, uh, everybody seen this, if they could receive the minutes. <coughs> and the work that constituted this meeting we'll be discussing momentarily. Fine, thanks. So there's a motion. Uh, I'll take that as a motion and a second. Thank you. Um, any further discussion on receipt of the minutes? Oh. All in favor? Opposed, that carries, and move straight on to, uh, yes, uh, 8D4, yeah. Bylaw and Policy Review Committee, verbal report, Peter. Yeah, so there's no draft minutes um, for this one, but uh, I thought it would, um, it would be good to just have a quick uh, rundown as to <coughs> what we talked about. Um, so this, uh, the topic of conversation for the meeting on June 27th was um, uh, business license bylaws. Um, and um, so the, uh, we talked about a few different aspects. One was um, licensing contractors from out, out of town. Um, and another was uh, home uses throughout the village. And the uh, third wa major category was uh, medical marijuana dispensaries. Uh, with respect to contractors, um, uh, the discussion devolved to the suggestion that uh, really it's more or less, the idea was uh, promulgated that the, the homeowner has the primary responsibility to uh, do their own due diligence to make sure that people hire uh, qualified uh, contractors and do the work. Um, and that they are registered for WorkSafe BC in particular. Um, we did discuss some of the other benefits of having business licensing f for that kind of thing, um, but the recommendation of the committee that, uh, that I got was uh, that council limit its involvement to more of a communications piece. Um, uh, by the village to the residents um, in regards to exercising due diligence, especially regarding work safe BC coverage, uh, so not proceeding with uh, regulation through a business licensing bylaw in that respect. Can uh, I just interject mm -hmm. there, Peter, just so that we all appreciate the issue here, uh, <coughs> if your contractor, uh, as, as somebody hiring one, doesn't have uh, adequate work safe and their workers get hurt, you're liable, as happened to our previous Premier, Mr. Campbell, where he was on the hook for millions. Most people aren't aware of the fact that one phone call to WorkSafe BC will get them registered for any project very quickly at very low cost, mm -hmm. and that will solve the issue. But mm -hmm. you're right, it is a responsibility to ask the question mm -hmm. and make sure and it's one phone call to WorkSafe BC to find out if they're actually registered. That's yeah. So that's something we'll want to promote uh, as part of sort of our general package. Uh, there's one other thing I did want to sort of I touched on it very briefly and haven't mentioned it. What did we discuss around uh, licensing of real estate agents, given the turnover of of uh, homes in the village and the massive commissions being earned? Did we get did we decide not to do anything about that as well, or did we table that? I I don't remember that discussion. Yeah, uh, it came up very briefly. We said something about real estate agents, and then we moved on. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that there's really an opportunity that I'm aware of for a municipal government to um, to transfer tax. charge charge 
fees that would be based upon the commissionable earnings of the real estate agent. I think it's more or less a license to operate, which, you know, you're usually talking a couple hundred bucks a year for a business license. Um, but we did talk about, you know, some of the other benefits of business licenses, such as um, knowing who's coming and going in your community, um, having intermunicipal um, business license program with uh, the, the, the other North Shore municipalities. Um, Having, uh, you know, you, you end up with a, a pool of people that uh, are more or less proved and recognized contractors. Um, and uh, you also know who's coming and going. You know, we don't know who's coming and going in here. And we see, we see trucks and we wonder, you know, okay, is that, is that tree cutting truck <laughs> doing something that, that we should know oil. about? Or is it all, all over the road. you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, there's there's a number of, of things that would assist us in terms of, of keeping tabs on things, but uh, in any event, um, we talked about home uses, and that, that so that's a big can of worms with lots of different uh, um, angles to it. Um, and you know, my, my view of, of regulating home use is not that you, you're not going after somebody who's brought work home from the office, that's certainly not what I would call a, a, a home use that you'd want to regulate. It's more or less those who are, who are establishing a business in their homes. And a lot of times it's use of the home itself as the business um, enterprise, um, whether it's a and b whether it's Airbnb. Um, and in particular, things like Airbnb or VRBO, which is vacation rental by owner, um, these things are becoming very popular and they're also becoming problematic for a lot of communities who are experiencing vacant households, homes that are not being used, and properties that previously were available for tenant use, you know, monthly rentals to people who can't afford to buy but need to find a place to live in your community, um, those places are disappearing uh, because people who previously rented such properties to tenants are now getting, you know, renting it out for seven nights a month instead of 30 and getting the same money with less wear and tear or making more money than what they would get from a, from a monthly rental. But, um, you know, I think that's... Um, so the recommendation that came out of that discussion was that the, this topic be discussed with council as to whether, whether they wish, you guys, wish to engage <coughs> in a consultation with the community on the pros and cons of allowing short-term accommodations and what it means for the community and, and long-term having a mix of, of accommodation within your community um, so that you don't end up with vacant homes and nowhere for people to live who aren't homeowners. We currently have several homes in the village that are owned by foreign owners that are rented out monthly. What do we, what kind of control do we have over that? Like, do we get a, uh, do we get a, a business license fee from them to operate a business in the village or operate a rental house in the village or because if we don't if we're not like this whatever we decide to do here is going to have to be a blanket thing you can't just say it's for these houses like uh, uh, well you can say you can say that um, for example you can say um, there shall be no um, uh, rental of property um, for less than 30 days, or less than 28 days, is, is a standard wording in a lot of zoning bylaws. So if you read so yesterday's paper, that's uh, Vancouver has that, for example. So anything other than that is a and b and it must be regulated as a and b which is B&B all... Or, or it can be a designated tourist accommodation zone, or, or, yeah. uh, or an Airbnb, you know, whatever you want to call it. it. You could set up all kinds of different categories for anything less than 30 days, but 30 days is going to be, that's your monthly tenant who's looking for a place to live. Um, less than that, then you you either prohibit it or you regulate it such that anyone who wants to do that under whatever parameters you set up, if you're going to allow it at all, uh, it, it has to follow those parameters and you charge a fee for that license to operate in that manner. Um, but I think that, you know, it's it's something that council should, should consider and think about. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to tackle it in this meeting, but... Um, I think that you probably need to think about all the issues that pertain to that and, and try and get ahead of that curve. I don't know that you're actually going to get ahead of it, but um, it's it's probably only going to grow in terms of how it affects Lions well, Bay. Well, I, 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 I can think of two examples since I've been here close to home. One was a house, a large house that sold, and 
went to a foreign owner and they decided to rent it out for 25 days or 30 days, whatever it was, and they rented it out to a guy that wanted to place to store a whole bunch of TVs and he got a whole shipment of TVs and electronic equipment and then all of a sudden they had a break in in the house and all hell broke loose and all this weird equipment was in there and stuff like that. And then I remember, I remember the police were there and everybody's investigating what the hell's going on and all this weird equipment in there. It's just a, a bunch of stolen property and nobody knew anything about it. And it was just a real schmozzle for about two months down below us. <laughs> the other one is a home that's currently rented out, owned by a foreign owner in Kelvin Grove. And the turnover of people is driving the neighbors crazy because they park everywhere, they got their vehicles, they're out to the parties all the time in the house and things like that. So there's another example of what yeah. can go wrong. Yeah, there's all kinds of issues that pertain to short-term rentals. Yeah, that's and, right. And um, sometimes more so than others. I mean, sometimes you can have people that come in and, and rent a place for four nights and they're quiet as a mouse, you don't mm -hmm. even notice them. Yeah. And then other times you're going to have the partiers that yeah. are here to So I think fun. it's probably a good idea to have a, have a discussion or have something. To, mm -hmm. to, I'm sure there's lots of homes in the village like that. Right. Yeah, I mean, these are all the things that I keep going on about. Things have changed, and what has yeah. changed, particularly in our case, is social media, and VRBO and Airbnb is social media, and Lions Bay has been discovered, and so we need to understand: Do we want to regulate that? Do we want to? Uh, do we need to inspect these things for health and safety reasons, or do we want to ban it completely, or do we want to do laissez-faire as we have today? So there's any number of B&Bs being advertised in Lions Bay. I presume that means short-term rental of a home of a room in your home as opposed to an Airbnb which is the home itself um, or a suite. So these are all things that we have to consider. It's as Peter says, it's to do with forming the ethos ethos of your community. Do we want to actually reserve non owner occupied spaces for longer term rentals to give people a place to live? For example our firefighters who are you know, living cheek by jowl in the few rental accommodations available in the village, when they could, in theory, if it was reserved for them, be living in, in the things that are currently B&Bs. Right now we don't regulate it. Uh, in terms of business license revenue, you know, <coughs> given the fact that there's so few of them and business licenses are in the hundreds of dollars, it's not worth the trouble to do. It's, it would be a safety thing. So, for example, did you want to talk about the uh, medical marijuana? Yeah, that was sort of topic number three, and that and um, the discussion about that. You know, we, had, we talked about some comparisons with um, Vancouver and other other uh, municipalities that have um, gone down the route of licensing uh, dispensaries and um, concluded that, um, from a legal perspective, we're probably better to wait and see what the federal government is going to come up with in terms of what will be allowed because they're going to come up with something and if we write something before we know what they're going to do it's probably going to we'll have to change it anyways we're better off to wait and see how we're going to regulate around what they permit um, but it was noted as well that um, you know uh, in terms of that's a that's a case where you can set uh, a much higher uh, business license fee uh, for that kind of a business um, that some of them are quite exorbitant in other places um, and still doesn't necessarily deter those businesses from from paying that because it's profitable um, for Lions Bay um, we could probably find a, a happy spot that maybe that wouldn't be profitable um, if that's you know if that's the ultimate desire of council <coughs> Um, so there's, that was sort of a wait and see uh, result at the end of the day, um, see what the federal laws look like and then uh, before we come back and, and make a stab at something like that if council's uh, wanting to go down that route and then at, at that time we'd look at comparison uh, bylaws and, and what the people charging for fees and so forth. So that was more or less it. Okay. Yeah. Pretty dry, dry stuff at the policy and bylaw review. But uh, you know, these are all things that we need to. That, was, that, wow, yeah, exactly. that was pretty interesting. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. we've got uh, we've got three people there alive. So be aware. Uh, start thinking about it. I think what we'll probably end up doing is um, potentially uh, at the time of the by-election in October, putting a plebiscite question out specifically on the medical marijuana. If we know what sort of questions there are available to ask at the time. Um, 
Do you think, think the feds would have come up with at least even? I I don't know. I think I think maybe you're jumping the gun there on yeah. the plebiscite, but um, I think as time goes on and and we see what's coming down the pipe, then uh, we could talk about potential options. Yeah. I don't think you'll see anything coming down the pipe that that soon. No, I don't I think, think so it's either. That's, it's it's an election thing, and it's out there it's going to float around for a while before they finally do something. Yeah, about it. it's, yeah it's a many-headed beast. That's they'll they'll right, want exactly. to get it right. No, that's right. So now, don't forget. I mean, the the dispensaries are currently allowed under legislation. <coughs> they're 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 in Vancouver. We've had an inquiry here uh, whether whether mm. what our thing was to cite one. They're they're not allowed under federal law. You cannot legally have a medical marijuana dispensary. So how do the the ones in Vancouver operate? Uh, the, Under a the municipality is, has created uh, licenses to allow them and the RCMP has chosen to sit back and wait because it's, uh, it's a lot of work and they know it's going to change. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, Mr. Robertson and his cronies are busy doing what they think they have to do to create some revenue and keep people happy in Vancouver and they really don't care about the rest of it. So that's just my, my statement. Sorry. Okay, we'll uh, we'll leave that one uh, as the committee recommended, uh, which is a wait and see. Uh, in short, correct, Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So we'll now move on to <coughs> eight. Was that the final one on eight D? Yeah. Emergency services. Emergency services. Mm -hmm. Was there a report in here? There wasn't. No. 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 Didn't think so. So we'll move on to resolutions. Uh, appointment of the Board of Variance Committee Secretary. Uh, there's a separate recommendation for this, or just is it here in the minutes? No, this, yeah. is just, this is just a resolution for the So council. can I have a motion, please, that Council appoint Susan Lotet as Secretary for Board of Variance Committee? Susan, do I pronounce that correctly? I, sh I should, should actually know that by now. Actually, we should strike the word committee. It's just Board of Variance, yeah. Um, motion, thank you. And a second. Any discussion? Susan, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking we should ask Susan first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing like being appointed. <clears throat> um, okay, so all in favor? Opposed? That carries. That was just a housekeeping piece. And we'll m move on to 10A. The uh, tree bylaw amendment bylaw number 491. This is uh, third reading, not adoption, starting on page 31. Um, we've done first and second reading on this. Peter, the one thing that I couldn't quite work out was there seemed to be inter interchangeable use of the term trees, views, and landscapes bylaw and tree bylaw. What's tree? Am Tell us where we stand there. So the amending bylaw will change the wording so that it's consistent throughout. It'll be trees, views, and landscapes. Okay. It'll be the trees, views, and landscapes bylaw, and it'll be trees, views, and landscapes committee. Okay, so this bylaw number 491 amends the previous bylaw? Uh, yes, it amends 393. So when we're done, we'll end up with a consolidated bylaw. 491 we'll and 393 together? Yeah. yeah. It will be 393 as amended. So when you go on the website and you click on 393, it will be the original 393 with all the changes we made. It will just read right through, just like the, the version that you have that's with the red and the, and the yellow highlights. Yeah. So just remind us, so, or remind me anyway, we need a bylaw to amend a bylaw. We can't just yes. amend the bylaw itself. You can't amend it by resolution, so you have to amend it by bylaw. It takes another law to, to, to make it work. Not that we've done that bef uh, in that manner before, have no, we? No, no, there are there are always bylaws that amend previous bylaws. And then what happens to this bylaw once we've done it? Or is we rescind it, or it's dead? No, no, it's you can't rescind it, or or you you'd be rescinding all the changes that you made. To oh, this contains three. the changes. Yeah, the yeah changes but, you don't go but we wouldn't have like this. Would, this would be on the index on the bylaw index that. Sean is working on, it would still be on there and it would say amends bylaw 393. So but if I wanted to know what the tree rules were, what would I read? 393, 393 as amended. 393 as amended. Yeah, as okay. consolidated. 
Got it. Okay, good. So even though we do actually add a bylaw, uh, it actually simplifies things ultimately. Once we're done consolidating things, at the end of the day, um, <coughs> there'll be less bylaws on the on the website. The website will be much simpler because you'll just what's my topic? Oh, it's trees. Okay, there'll be one bylaw. There will be one. Yeah. yeah. No matter how many times we amend it, there'll be one bylaw that they click on. Good. Okay. Thanks for that. I I, I guess I, sh I should have probably asked that at the first and second reading, but. Okay, so this is the third reading. Um, this after this, uh, no changes. So now's your time. I think I have. One. So just uh, if I could start, um, there is a report. Um, so it talks about reading it a third time. Um, right now it says number two is that the following resolution from the March twenty second regular council meeting be rescinded, <coughs> which is. Um, that we would make an amendment to the fees and charges bylaw to, to up the tree cutting permit fee from 40 to 60. So the recommend, on the recommendation of the tree committee, that resolution would be rescinded to keep the fee at $40. Unbeknownst to me at the time I suggested this, I didn't know that it had only recently been up from 20 to $40. So. I think you know I'm, I'm I'm fine with the suggestion that you know it be yeah. left at forty, um, or you can saw it off in the middle if you want. I don't know, <laughs> uh, but the other thing that that isn't here that should should be on this list of one, two, and and, and a third uh, thing would be also the uh, bylaw notice enforcement bylaw um, be read for a second and third time, uh, just and to get, accommodate the changes to do with to, trees to accommodate the the additional. Uh, penalties that are now being, uh, yeah. you know, a, another means of enforcement. So instead of having to go to court, if somebody cuts down a tree illegally, uh, we can find them through our bylaw notice enforcement bylaw process, yeah. uh, which is a much simpler process, al although the fines are a bit lower. Um, yeah. Okay, so can I just ask, mm -hmm. do we speak anywhere before we do third reading about disposal of the cut down tree? Um, I think that's generally addressed in the recommendations of the tree committee, and um, it's in every one. And also, we're taking a deposit now. Yeah, we're taking a deposit as well. If they don't, if they don't abide by all the conditions that are attached, so if tree committee recommends cut, clean, remove, like you just did, and they don't do it. Then we will in the future we'll have a deposit of five hundred dollars. At least lose your deposit. Yeah. I mean, just to remind us all, uh, you know, what's happening now is that people are felling trees, bucking them maybe, <coughs> and leaving them there, or rolling them down a hill <coughs> into the undergrowth so they never get seen again. Uh, I've shown Peter several instances on the Centennial Trail. It's a fire hazard. It's unsightly. It's lazy. It's not fair on people who, whatever. So that will get handled always in the in the the, the tree committee's permission for cutting public trees. What about cutting private trees? We don't regulate cutting private trees. Uh, and if people dump them down the hill? That would fall under... Their hill? No. Could be. Somebody else's hill. Or, uh, um, the, or the public hill. It would be dumping then. It would be dumping, yeah. Mm. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure which bylaw we... But I'm... Probably didn't contemplate we'd, it. <laughs> we'd have something, <laughs> I hope. Well, so case in point, uh, Fred, right opposite you, on the other side of Bayview, somebody cut down trees, or maybe just a little bit down from you, mm -hmm. and I guess that is a private lot um, beyond the road allowance, and they buck the trees and just roll them down the hill. So they're now sitting in the ditch along the sound wall along the highway. <coughs> Oh, on that side. Yeah. yeah, on that side, on the opposite side from you. So, mm. private trees, uh, I guess they had the property owner's permission, maybe. Um, you know, it's a vacant lot. Mm. Um, well, it's done. It's okay. no. no enforcement of that, but that's not the bylaw's fault. No. Okay, good. No. So, that was, my only, that was my only question. But that, So, that is handled another way, private and private. I would have to be handled a different way. Yeah. Good. So, just so we're clear, this is for trees that are on village property? Yes. Or adjacent to village property? No, on village property. It does talk about heritage. It does talk heritage. about, yeah. Okay, okay so there, the, yeah, you picked up on, on a couple of things. So 
there are a couple of changes that I'm going to walk you through. Okay. Um, so the first is, um, so on bylaw 491, which is page 34 of your agenda, paragraph 2A, the word the appears twice, so we're going to strike the second one. <laughs> <coughs> and then this is for third reading. Mm -hmm, yeah. Good. And then on schedule B, page. as you just know, uh, that'll be page forty-five of ninety-six. So as just pointed out by Councillor Hughes, uh, it will no longer say on on schedule B for tree cutting on or near municipal property at. It should say for tree cutting on municipal property near, and then there will be an address. To identify where it's near. Yeah. Um, thank you, Simon, for that, as well as Councillor Hughes. Um, and then we have. Oh, and that's okay. That's the same thing. Um, So we did have, uh, let's see, one other thing that uh, Jim Cannell suggested was um, on page 69 of 96, which is Schedule D, which is the terms of reference, that paragraph 3 talks about um, different uh, ideas and different ways of compromise to, uh, instead of cutting something to uh, thin things out or window or spiral etc etc so the very first bullet says thinning out smaller trees to open the view and enhance the aesthetic value of the remaining trees um, Jim <coughs> suggested that maybe we should be deleting the word smaller so that that option is available regardless of the size of the tree mm -hmm. um, which I didn't I don't disagree with uh, I don't know what anybody else's thoughts are on that isn't that what they used to call juvenile pruning in the forest, they used to have huge programs to thin out uh, the trees. Smaller like trees? Smaller or, trees. Or regular, no, they're just, just to let allow <coughs> more significant trees to grow right. properly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Did can we, we speak... Uh, see, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think in, in bylaw terms. We're, we are talking about changing the, the original trees, the trees bylaw, which is now the Trees, Views and Landscapes, mm -hmm. Do we speak anywhere in here about when trees may be cut, the, the, outside the nesting period? Yes. So that will be... Probably in there somewhere. So if we go to... So starting on page 47 is, is basically a consolidated version <coughs> of, of after the amendments. Oh, okay. So this is the consolidated version. Yeah, I mean, it'll be cleaned up without the, the red lining and the highlighting and stuff. Because, you know, at the end of yeah, the day, yeah. it'll just be by law will look, will look normal. Um, so the, 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 red, um, the red lining was changes that occurred um, between second and third. And, um, and then the highlighted portions are what changed... Um, Sorry, that was after second was the red lining, and then the highlighted portions were changes that came <coughs> after uh, we met uh, with the tree committee. So that's just prior so to third reading. Yeah. So, um, so you'll see that uh, we changed on page 50. Uh, it's yeah. not a select committee, it's an advisory committee. Um, on page 51 at 3.4.1.4. Can I just it, touch on that one? Sure, yeah. So the community charter only allows for select and standing. So, so advisory is so not a title, it's just a committee. It's a type of committee, and, and so it's a, this committee is, is a committee which is, um, owes its existence to the bylaw itself. The bylaw creates the committee, and it creates it as an advisory body to council. So the, the committee's role is to review things and, and present recommendations to advise council on these applications that it gets, right? Okay. 
Yeah, so a select committee would be, you know, it would its terms of reference would end once yeah. its project was done. Yeah. So, so this is definitely not a select committee. Yeah. Okay, fine. But and we don't want it a standing committee because that's appointed by the mayor only. Yeah. yeah. No, this is yeah. It's, 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 an, advisory it's an advisory committee. committee. Okay, fine. Yeah. And then uh, the the fee will simply in the future be a function of whatever changes yeah. or, or amendments to the to the fees and charges by the. Okay, um, I see the dates here. Three point four point eight. So you asked about um, page fifty-three. <coughs> yeah. So some of the changes we've got here now include um, you've got to hire a certified arborist or professional tree cutting contractor. Um, you've got a damage deposit required in three point four point nine, which is five hundred dollars. Um, the arborist contractor has got to be in good standing with WorkSafe BC. And obtain and, and maintain um, li public liability insurance in the amount of five million, in connection with his obligations under this bylaw. Um, they'll just be named an additional insured. Um, and the usual, th these are pretty standard yeah. provisions for for requirements for insurance. Um, and the bird nesting one is at three point four point eight. So in order to protect nesting birds. No tree cutting may be carried out between March 1st and July 31st in any given year. And then we've added, um, unless the arbor an arborist certifies that there are no bird nests in the subject tree or trees. Because there is some variations in terms of types of birds and periods of time and so forth. So, uh, But the March 1st to 31st of July is sort of a this period that shouldn't happen at all uh, unless... Um, you've got a certified arborist that says it's okay, and not helped, uh, not helped by said arborist to remove said nest. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> so we can uh, we can only guard against so much stuff. Okay, we're not necessarily going to go through the whole thing. Okay. So um, now, just explain to me why under three point nine we start if, uh, speaking about fines again, rather than putting that in the fees and charges by law. So um, the fees and charges by law would be. What does it cost you to apply for a permit to cut down a tree? So it's forty dollars. That's in the tree. That's in the fees and charges bylaw. Fines. They don't go in the fees and charges bylaw. They go in either the bylaw notice enforcement bylaw, or they go in this bylaw itself. It can't go in in, in the bylaw notice enforcement bylaw if it's more than five hundred dollars. So that's why you see these ones here for. One thousand, you know, if it's yeah. not a significant tree, one thousand bucks for the first tree cut, three thousand for a second or subsequent trees, and if it is a significant tree, then it's four and six for first and subsequent. Um, and then there's the proviso as well that uh, we can also use the bylaw notice enforcement bylaw, which you'll see if we refer to that. I've, I've listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, sections that uh, are that have penalties set out ranging from 300 to 475 and then the late payment penalty on some of those would take it to the maximum of 500 yeah it's not insignificant um, now the, the fee the $40 fee not $60 fee mm -hmm. is that per tree or per application no that's per application okay so maybe we should <laughs> Yeah, that's an idea. Well, <laughs> I'm waiting till the end of July, whenever my window period is. Because I've got a hedge in front of me that needs at work. And we're talking about 50 trees. All little things, but they're on, on the boulevard. Um, so now, just talk about... Um, this is only talking about public trees on mm -hmm. public property. Mm -hmm. What happens when somebody cuts down a heritage tree on their own property? We don't. There's nothing to be done? We don't regulate trees on private property. Okay, everybody's. Yep. So, I mean, that's correct. Right? That's a whole different ball of wax in, yeah. um, I forget, West Bend or North Bend. West just, Bend just did that. Just, just did that. Yeah. But it's that's been a long process and put me in mind fairly contentious. And yeah. So, we'll maybe sit back and see how that goes for you <laughs> when yeah. I look at that. Yeah, they've got more lawyers than we do. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah, okay. Pretty mm. good, I think. Uh, so the ye the yellows are changes that we have not seen yet, and I mean it's really just actually 
clarification, slight improvements in wording, so on and so forth. Right, Peter? Okay, so without further ado, let's uh, let's do this or not, as the case may be. Can I have a motion to do third reading on the... Oh, sorry, I just one, one thing that I should just point out. Was yeah. There were some additional um, significant trees added to Schedule C yeah. at the suggestion of the committee. And so that was an additional change that we didn't talk about. Big leaf maple, some people consider that a... A weed, but uh, 70 well, centimeters. 70 centimeters, that's yeah, a big tree. That's a big tree. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so the one that we're doing the third reading on is the mm -hmm. amendment bylaw. Correct, Peter? Yes. That is bylaw number 491. So can I have a motion for <coughs> third reading and a second? Any further discussion? Going, going, gone. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. <coughs> Good. Now what? Uh, the fees and charges. Secondly, well, how about secondly, if we could say um, uh, give bylaw number three eighty five amendment bylaw number five oh seven. First, first second, and third reading. We can do three readings. Yes. Yeah. So this is really just uh, <coughs> tabulating the fines associated with the thing we've just done the third yeah. reading. I will point out that uh, section two of the bylaw fixes. Uh, a few errors that I picked up in the in the schedules relating to other bylaws. So, for instance, um, the fire regulation bylaw, uh, the fines set out for some of the things in fire. Um, under under those provisions, you'd have a a um, a penalty of four. Sorry, Penalty was four hundred, and the early or four fifty, and the early payment was four hundred. And then instead of saying the late penalty was four seventy five, which it ought to have, it said the late payment penalty was two hundred and twenty. Oh, so you have better to pay late. Or one eighty. So yeah, it was it was a few a few or they're just like obvious errors. So so those have all been fixed, um, and. Okay, well, we'll take your word for it. My, my concern is that we haven't even seen a red line strike out of this one, uh, and we're talking about third reading. Um, so we're just going to take it on faith that it's good. Yeah, um, well, I mean, if, if at the end of the day you, you want to change what's council's it, preference then, then it'll, it'll have to get changed. So we, we, have, a, road, we have a recommendation to do three readings on this. I'll take that motion. One, I think you're motioning. And a second, any discussion? Is it, are we being premature? That's the question. Well, I mean, the only thing is, you know, are we going to catch any small errors that Peter didn't catch? Because that's all we're talking about here. Oh, three, this is just a number. It's a three-page amendment of which yeah. there are four columns. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, plus all the other little catches. I quite like that little late payment loophole. <laughs> not that I've availed myself. We were just doing this one, did we not? And then mm -hmm. we were just talking about things we were all confused. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, 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 was I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have jumped, jumped, the gun have jumped ahead. No, well, that's, so that's, what, okay. that's what the mayor was about to do. And I, okay. I, I had my own notes in my report mixed up. We've got to do so. 10B first? Yeah, let's do 10. Well, oh, it's still part of 10A, but it's the, uh, it's the rescission of the previous resolution that said bring back uh, an amendment to the fees and charges by law to raise it from 40 to 60. So... The recommendation is that you uh, rescind that resolution. Okay. And just leave it at four. So that's just a housekeeping issue. Yeah. Can I have yeah. uh, that motion? Thanks. And a second. Any discussion? 40 to 60, back to 40. All in favor? Opposed? That carries. Fine. Thanks, Shauna. Well done. And so now 10C. I have, there's a motion on the table and a second. Um, any further discussion? The only discussion that I just will. Remind us that we're talking about three readings, meaning no further changes, but it's ad administrative. And we're, we're talking about the administrator par excellence here. He's not going to drop the ball on us. Okay. We'll find out when we're challenged in court. <laughs> and then Peter will be standing up there explaining. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's pretty simple. The only ones that I... These ones are, are obvious, the tree ones, I can see them, but mm. these ones that we're changing... Yeah, I didn't even think about... 
Okay, but that out better for you. So that's I mean, I'm just looking at A1, A2, and A3. Those go up. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah, fine. Hey, so I'm call good. A motion. Okay, call the motion. Okay, call the question. Um, in favor? Opposed? Ron? I'm fine. You're in favor? That carries. Okay, good. So now we are moving on to uh, 10B, Bylaw Enforcement Officer Bylaw 506 Adoption. Uh, that is on page way back here. 73? Hmm? 70 something, anyway, yeah. So now it says, the only question I have for you, Peter, was it says adopted on June 23rd. Yeah, I've got a note. On page 75. Yeah. Okay, so that's it wasn't adopted. No. No. Because it was the same meeting. We it couldn't. We yeah, couldn't adopt right. it. Yeah. Right. <coughs> yeah. Just if, to remind you that we had that two-day meeting, mm -hmm. uh, but we realised it was the same meeting, and you cannot adopt a bylaw in the same meeting that it was given the readings on. So this is the adoption um, of this bylaw, number five hundred six. Can I have a motion? Thanks. And a second. And any discussion? All in favour of adoption and opposed? It carries. And that was Sean, by the way, who picked that up. Yes, you're, yeah. But mm -hmm. Sean reads the uh, community charter for, for pleasure. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just the Bible on Sundays and the rest of its bylaws. I can write Chair uh, Watterson a thank you. You notice how I'm now putting notes in my book rather than on the on the package. Your book's not as big as mine is. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> and my writing's bigger. Well, actually, they're pretty close. Okay. So Thanks. thank you to uh, Simon Watterson for his work on the bylaws. Thank you. And, and, and all, a bunch all of the would be enough. All, all of the committee were very helpful and uh, had a lot of good comments and and good input. Um, so it was uh, yeah no it's a pleasure to. Uh, to work with them and to have that, that that feedback and their thanks or thanks to them is well well founded. Yeah. Great. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to eleven. A list of correspondence. Ron, will you do the honors? Uh, yes, but uh, I will be referring back to you, in a, but I'll editorialize before I do. On uh, item G3, uh, 2016, the Community Recognition Award, there's no response. This is uh, honoring wood buildings that we built in the last year, of which there are none, so NR. Uh, G2, the Fed Government Reviewing post Public Postal Services, uh, Cup W Endeavor. And the issue, if we've got any concerns with the Government Postal Service, we should tell them. You could guess this would be uh, a little bit out of our bailiwick since the current system we have. In my personal view, the arrangements are satisfactory and safe. But should we not say so? Uh, to Cup W or to the Feds? Uh, the Fed input. Because they're asking for input to the well, Canada Post group. It's a backdoor way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, so you have to. Uh, well, actually, I think. You know what? I think that's an excellent idea because should somebody think they we should have. Boxes that would, in my view, be not such a good idea. So oh, exactly. I would uh, be, we're be if you want to, uh, we could direct. I guess you could write on our behalf. Well, I don't know what our policy would need. I mean, we're, this is a policy decision. What, what do we want? I'm, without knowing the answer, I'm sure there's a contract in place for some time right now. Well, just to remind council, you know, it was uh, only through. Uh, Former Mayor Broughton's efforts that yeah. that the community post boxes on the corners were quashed, uh, and I agree with Ron. I, I don't like those things at all. There's nowhere to park. Uh, it's raining. It's dark. Not from a safety perspective. It's just it's not as nice as going down to the post office to get your mail. So, I mean, I believe we want to keep keep our central mail facility as long as possible. There was a lot of comments in favor of. The, the local post box. They were as, as well. Know, as, yeah. as opposed to going to the post office to collect it. And so I don't think that we sh we would, I don't want to be voting on saying something about that without talking to the community because I think there are some valid concerns out there in the community. I know I have neighbors atop my street that would rather have 
their post out their mailbox at the Walkable, top of the street, yeah. accessible as they're coming home, rather than have to come up and go back down again. And the more of us that are um, how would you propose, unfit, how would you propose to do that? <laughs> well, I don't. Well, Canada know. Post wants to do it because well, I think the only way to do this is you know I think we should table this. For, think about this. Is there a deadline on this? Well, I'm just looking at this. Uh, the task force collecting input from blah blah blah. June 23rd deadline for the <coughs> municipalities and organization. End of July deadline for public. Looks like we're already dropped dead. Okay, good. No action. Why would they ask us after the fact? Well, the letter was June 6th. Okay. We received it on June the 16th. Actually, can I, can I ask through Peter? Uh, can I ask Sean to confirm that it is the 23rd deadline? I'm looking at page 86, the first paragraph. I'm reading it, providing number 23rd deadline for the municipalities and regulations. Okay, no response. Moving on. Okay, so I mean, you well, know, that sort of begs the question for the bigger question, but go public. ahead. Public. Well, just hang on a second now. This is a question that came up. This has come up more than once, and the, we fl the, the community over the years has flip flopped, and this went back and forth, okay? Mm. So, but this is an opportunity to find out if we have a chance to, to voice a. Like, my f the first thought that jumps into my head that this was something that could be kicked back till after we do our by election is it not a question we could ask during the by election about post office? By about well, no, there's an end of July deadline for the public, the municipal deadline's passed, so, okay. so I can just proselytize this in, in do the this in e post. Yeah. And I, so, just when you're looking at this, it's uh, page 86, girl, yeah. okay, and it's Canada.ca. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll leave that with you. The last, next one, G3, Maple Ridge application for HPS funding, which is the homelessness, partner, homelessness partnering strategy. Uh, as Mayor Burr knows, I'm on the board of the Salvation Army, and to say that Nicole Reed is a favorite of the Salvation Army would be an incorrect statement to deal with the homeless. Uh, I recuse myself from this topic, handing it back to Mayor Burr. Okay, so I think what Nicole is asking for, and Mary Reed's asking for, is a letter of support on behalf of the municipality to accompany the funding mm -hmm. application. They are seeking funding um, to host a regional summit. Now, Mary Reed is very exercised about a homeless camp uh, adjacent to their library or in a park, uh, essentially in downtown Maple Ridge. Um, and remind us what they did with the Salvation Army. They closed it. I know the Salvation Army stays open. It was part of the uh, election piece that the business district should not have the uh, tent camp. So uh, she advised the Salvation Army they were not providing the service. The service that the Salvation Army offered in their approximately 25 to 30 beds was that the um, the uh, the uh, inhabitants had to maintain a certain threshold uh, as in alcohol and other things okay. uh, and if they couldn't meet that then there was no point in just carrying them overnight so she was looking for a warehousing situation uh, she ultimately went to uh, province of BC who ultimately uh, did a six month program in a different shelter these people have moved over there she's lobbying for that to continue What's our response to this? Well, from my perspective, they're asking us to speak on an issue that we don't really have any currency in. It. We don't have a homelessness issue in Lions Bay. So well, we've got lots of squatters down at the end here. You mean summertime? With mm. Yeah. I, I think that's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Uh, well, I don't know. They're living there quasi permanently. Um, oh, yeah. <coughs> but they're not your typical homeless. They're they're the people that like the sunshine and want to do their own thing. That's true. Yeah, they they don't need to. They don't need to be near support, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, needle exchanges and uh, and substance abuse labs and so on. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, th there's a there's a spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, the the question here is, do we want to write a letter of support for the summit? Which is on page ninety. The question that comes to mind is that we live on the west coast. We have a problem with people coming from the East Coast all the way across the country and then they ending up here at the West Coast where they can't go any further. And so we end up with things like, and I'm not, I'm just, think, I'm just saying that there's, 
there's two sides to it, and I'm wondering if if it isn't our duty to think about what's what it's doing to our fellow communities around here that have that has the problem. Exactly. You know, I think that to me is the driving issue for us. Yeah, we're a member of the regional district. That's uh, right, we are, and what if we belong to, yeah, the regional district, so we need to respond accordingly. I agree. I, I, I think we should send this letter. At least, you know, I presume they're going to get people from all sides of the the question, right? I mean, I'm looking at the at the at the blurb on the on the well, summit itself. So for provincial funding. Yeah, I mean, I mean what they, we, they can't do it, and they and in fact they don't contribute to it. Seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars. So if this can support them in that effort, then to me it's worthwhile. Yeah. Let's hope they do a good job. And the province will be adjudicating that, of course. Peter, anything to suggest there? Okay, so I'll write the letter to, uh, uh, to whom it may concern. That'll be easy, because it's just a cut and paste. Okay. Let's uh, move on. Move on, which is, again, I'll just do the warm-up back for you, uh, Carl. Um, there were the three residence letters uh, up until an hour before council meeting. Uh, I'd ask Peter and Shauna to include the latest of similar on um, the LNG. So we've got Simons, this one, and another one, Mayor one, Watterson one, uh, Dudley Dudley and Von Krosik is the last, uh, which is all here on our table that I think everybody here has seen electronically. Uh, and the, if I was to pick out one line, it would be that the uh, mayor and council reverse their stance and sign uh, Westland Councilor's Opera, which is like, and I defer back to you, Mayor. Okay, thanks. So the letter uh, in question, the, the famous letter, is is on the on table package. It's one addressed to uh, Mr. Trudeau, dated April 29th. Um, and you will recall the discussion uh, that we had was that we didn't want to sign this because we felt there were better ways to skin this cat. Also, that uh, it was a bit uh, sort of strange procedure to present something and assume that it was going to be signed regardless. Apparently, um, Mayor Smith and Mayor Skills have signed it. I don't know about the others, one way or the other. We've heard from six residents that they'd like us to sign the letter. Uh, I'll just point out that uh, not signing the letter was in no way representative of our position on LNG, which has not changed. It's been well established by resolution of council, uh, this council, not the same people, but it hasn't been rescinded or revoked. That's established. <coughs> so, what? Well, we're, we're hearing from our constituents, there's some of them, that they're concerned about it. They'd like us to sign it. They'd like us to sign it. We're, again, I'll just re-emphasize. Yeah. Our position on LNG, we're, we're opposed to LNG. Transport and production. Yeah. So, do we want to sign this letter? Does what's, it, the, uh, what's, what's the negative side of signing the letter? Uh, it flies in the face of provincial policy, and I, I think in my very innocent political uh, uh, lack of experience that there are better ways to advocate our position than signing a letter that's going to put the cat amongst the pigeons or uh, the Premier and whoever else. But I don't actually care that much anymore because, as we know from our priority session, we really have bigger fish to fry with in Lions Bay. That's right. Uh, as as uh, MLA Sturdy has pointed out to me, you know, little Lions Bay, sure, great, sign the letter. Uh, you know, uh, they will start getting a little more concerned when Squamish signs it, uh, where the facility is going to be. Squamish has not signed it, to my knowledge. Uh, now, West Van has, uh, that's a big municipality, Bowen has. I mean, you know, we're, we're really the only four municipalities directly impacted. Uh, electoral Area A doesn't even feature on this thing in, in an act of political innocence. Um, you know, they're just as impacted. Any thoughts, Peter? Uh, I think you've covered the gambit. I don't know. Again, if we as council 
we obviously, the community is obviously opposed to the LNG project, okay? As a member of the community, I know I certainly am, but thinking from the point of view of a little higher elevation, looking at it down, I don't see anything negative about the council supporting something the council, the village, they think the village believes in. And if, exactly. if it's, I, I don't see why we would even not want to sign the letter anyways. I mean, we talked about it before and we, we, we made a decision that was maybe unpopular. So I'm wondering why. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I wrote to it's, the village a, in, in the mayor's piece and said, you know, that's the thing, unless the village tells us different. Well, six people in the village have told us different. And, and those nobody six has people said, are supported by who knows how many others. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, you're right. I, so I'm not. I, I'm not proud. You know, I, as far as I'm concerned, we made a mistake. We we can change it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. We are opposed to the LNG project. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. So why not put our? Money? And it's a well-written letter, except for some uh, funky, funky capitalization <coughs> and punctuation. But um, us, I, w I would be happy to sign it regardless. What do we say? Well, the question I have is: there anything? Um, substantial in the letter that is objectionable in itself. No. Um, we are asking the Prime Minister to reconsider the permitting of the facility. It's been done by his minister, Minister McKenna, uh, the Minister of the Environment and something, climate change. Um, but we're also asking, uh, should the proposed facility be built that would be involved in monitoring the 122 conditions included in the minister's decision. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we would actually um, take part in that. Yeah, I guess some sort of uh, body or board that that has some clout maybe to insist on reporting. I, I have no idea. Sitting in the chair that I do, uh, <clears throat> I would not. I'm very cognizant of the power of the provincial government to give grants to whom they choose to for whatever reason they do. And I, Carl, I think your negotiation skills are excellent, but I'd hate to think that you're working at a deficit as this situation goes farther and farther. I think that if um, there was uh, uh, something on the highway where it was an opposition, we'd all, everybody in this council <coughs> would be standing there uh, as individual citizens, but for me, I struggle with just going with the flow on this one and putting future grants at risk. Yeah, with it, with a lines of opinion counts whether that's real or not. I mean, yeah, I have no idea if it is. I do know that it's provincial policy to promote LNG in BC. Right. If if I could take a contrary point of view, I think sometimes you got to stick to the higher ground and, and believe is it right or is it wrong and whether we get grant funding or not grant funding, it's not on our neck. If they're going to withhold grant funding because we signed a letter, shame on them. Mm -hmm. And then I would remember that at the next election. I, I, if, that's, if that's a bully tactic, I would, I would not want to take part in it. Yeah, let's not go too far down that road. I mean, there's no suggestion that would happen, uh, although uh, I would suggest how to put this cleverly, that um, I believe that, that there are ways to further our advocacy better than protest. And we did one of them, for example, we participated in the environment assessment process. Okay, they, they let us in late, uh, our response was quite voluminous and, and from what I understand from uh, the, the body itself, um, our, our input was insufficiently technical. It was supposed to be a technical body. Um, but at least, you know, we had an opportunity to provide some, some real feedback. It wasn't holding signs and waving them. It was actually participating. And, and from what I understand, a lot of the 122 conditions are around marine traffic. And we had some say in that. Would we get invited to another one of those bodies if we're amongst the placard wavers? I, I don't know. We were invited to that body because MLA Sturdy, who ran it, saw us as a reasonable, uh, see both sides of the question kind of uh, uh, stakeholder. I think MLS 30 invited us because he knew he had to have us there. And I think he invited other people in the corridor for the same reason. Okay, I don't want to overinflate our, our ability here, but the reality is that I think that, I mean, 
they're going to do what they think they need to do. What I'm saying is, have we actually been approached by by the provincial government saying, don't do that, or you shouldn't do that, or we we, we think we this is a better idea? They haven't told us that. No, uh, no, they're crazy no, to do that. That's yeah. right. So the thing is that we either believe or we don't believe. Okay, that's this Carl. I think really you're the one that's got you're the primary face in front of the province. I mean, if you uh, given the chair you sit in, I think we're a small postage stamp in the whole scheme here. Uh, and I also concur with Jim on you know the invitations here too. So at the one hand, I'm quite prepared to say you know I hate to put our grants at risk here, but uh, our council tends to be quite unanimous on major issues like this. If you think it's in your view, and we look to you as our CEO, that this is uh, where you think council needs to do this for the community, then I'm sure you could put it to the vote pretty quick. Tell you what, um, thanks for that. I, I'm going to talk to the, the other nominated, nominated signatories and see what their positions are on this. Um, not to duck the question, but to understand why they would or wouldn't sign it. Does that, would that help us? I, I mean, I, agree, I, I don't know what to do. I agree with every one of the points I've heard. It's a, it put it to a vote? Well, you want to do it now? I mean... Well, it's, yeah, but you're going to be the first one cast. No, I mean, I'm just signing on behalf of the council. I mean, it's not a, well, yeah, but you're the one that's negotiating with the province. He's the no, one negotiating no, no, with the province. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> he gives you the information. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you know, as as uh, Jordan Sturdy said to me the other day, you know, sorry to say this to you, Carl, but Lions Bay doesn't really count for very much in the in the in the grand scheme of political politics. On the other hand, uh, you know, we have some pretty vocal people who provide a forum for in almost every case. Although I must say, you know, I heard some very vocal, uh, or emphatic, let's put it that way, uh, support of LNG last time I asked. None. None of those people came out of the woodwork this time. No. There's, there's oh, one. Actually, there is one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's our job to gauge the other thousand adults' opinion in Lions Bay. So right now we have six opinions, and there's about a, a, a thousand and six adults. So what do we think everybody else? I mean, here's the thing. As I said in my Friday piece, the rest of the region either doesn't care, it's a non-issue for them, or they support it. It's only the people in Howe Sound that are opposed to it. Classic NIMBYism. Even though I say I don't, I don't like NIMBYism, but it is NIMBYism. For good reasons, because we know it's our backyard, we understand the threat, we, are, we know why we don't want to do it. But for the rest of the region, I was stunned. I went to this summit with uh, the other small villages uh, in, in the regional district. They're actively seeking to have this project moved to Indian Arm. They want it. We could always encourage that, I suppose. <laughs> so the point is, you know, our position is not universal by any means, even just in the region. So I'm at a bit of a loss. You know, I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, and we have much bigger priorities uh, that are taking up my time. I, you know, I've already s spent the table and reflect this. Yeah, I don't want to defer. I don't want to just duck it. But well, I don't think it's ducking. You want to make some phone calls? Maybe so. I mean, I. I spent a lot more time on this than I should have. But Good. Then spend another two weeks on it. Come back. It's losing me sleep. And I don't want to stand on principle either. I actually don't know what the right thing is to do. Okay, so we'll table this one. Okay. okay. Bring it back. Thanks, Sean. Whew. Okay. And we'll put this here. Is that it for correspondence? Yes, it is. Uh, oh, there's one. No, we've got 11C, which is correspondence yeah. that was tabled from June 21st meeting. Yes, okay, is that on the back oh, of this right, package? Right, right. No, it's single. It's, it's a single one. one. Yeah. No, it's, the it's two things. Okay, this was about the train. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and the UBCM. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Pierre. Okay, so... Um, Do we want to write to the Premier asking to bring back the uh, Prince George passenger train, yes or no? So I think in a nutshell, my notes had 
uh, and we probably discussed all this last time, but there's no station in Lions Bay. Individuals can sign the petition if they want to, and we've advertised the petition uh, in our agenda and minutes two meetings in a row. So we put it out there. Well, People. that's very much pool marketing, but uh, but yeah, fair enough. Um, what do we say? This is on the. This is uh, there's n there's no motion on the table. Just give me a sense. Write the letter or not. I mean, no private sector enterprise being asked to function by government. Yeah. Thank you. Fred? You gave me my words. Jim. Yeah. Yeah, I'm of the same mind. Although I would like to say that I I am actively advocating for commuter rail between um, the North Shore and Squamish using the same rail line, but that's a whole different project. This is, this is, this is via rail uh, that is now having to raise funding. Okay, so no action, no resolution required. And UBCM, uh, my intention had not been to go to UBCM uh, for cost reasons, if nothing else. Um, but I'm hearing from, from staff, meaning Peter, and colleagues that I should be. Well, my suggestion would be that um, if we can get a meeting with uh, Minister Thompson and or Premier Clark, then it would be worthwhile to go. Topic uh, of? Topic of Brunswick Pet. Yeah. Okay, so there was that. Uh, as I mentioned that I went to the uh, Small Villages uh, Summit Forum um, the other day. And we have a plan afoot where we're seeking a meeting with the with uh, Minister Fassman, the Small Communities Minister, uh, for an hour to talk about uh, the need for either a rebate on our um, provincial levy on the grounds that we are sub-economic in a very expensive to, to work in region, meaning our staff are more expensive, everything's more expensive because of competition, or uh, an increase to the Small Communities Grant. Now, what's the chances? But the, the fact that it's during UBCM is more just for travel convenience. This is not going to be a, a UBCM resolution, which, as we know, are, are worth less than the paper they're written on. Um, so that was the, the other reason that, that we thought that maybe it would be a good idea to go. So now I'm hearing that I should go. So, I think you should go. So let's... Uh, the, the things are going round uh, for meetings, so I will... Should I request them, Peter, or uh, I'll do that. you do that? So you're going to request Minister Thompson and the Premier, and then and then well, how does it, uh, Ralph Ralph Drew, who is the longest serving mayor in Canada, mm -hmm. is going to just tap into his personal network uh, okay. to to get the, the meeting with Fast Vendor. Okay. It's not within the purview of UBCM; it's just at the same time. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to UBCM. Fine. What about the f um, Susan Antoine for that? Call out rates and all that stuff. Yeah, I, and I will also be asking. Um, but I, uh, Peter and I need to talk about that. I mean, there's a bigger thing here. Exactly. I don't want to queer the pitch for bigger okay. things on the highway. Just thinking to make it. But uh, I have been speaking to the RCMP. I went to this big RCMP uh, bash on last Tuesday where the commissioner was there and asked about their amenability to uh, putting in average speed zones uh, in safety areas. Mm -hmm. And they are interested they suggested we need to look up uh, cases in the rest of the country I don't even know if there are I don't have time to find it out so I'll have to do it in my spare time okay so you're going to Victoria I'm going Thank to you. Victoria and that is so September sometime. does he need a budget Peter? it's September 26 to 30 um, there is a budget um, I was hoping well, not to spend it. Budget, so I'm yeah. We probably don't need all four days. So right. That's true. We'll, we'll narrow. We'll, we'll see what we end up with in terms of meetings. And I'll stay on. I'll stay on a friend's couch as well. So that's going to save money. So you really just be travel cost. And I'll drive, so I'll take the ferry. Shall I send some cancer <coughs> soup with you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, I thought that every other year would be good to go. I mean, the one in Vancouver was good. It was worthwhile. It's good to see what other people are thinking. But the fee itself is not cheap either, right? It's quite a grand. Yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, that's all details. That's, that's standard. Yeah. Yeah. It's a money maker. Government's getting their money back. Okay, so UBCM is on. Thank you, Peter. So, assuming we can get the meetings. Assuming we can get the meetings, but let's assume that's going to yeah. happen. Okay, so whew, all of a sudden the agenda slowed down significantly. Um, new business, wood. What does that mean? 
has to do with treaties again, but this has not has nothing to do with the tree committee or tree views and landscape committee. Um, I was speaking to a resident yesterday, and she was expressing concern about um, the tree work the contractor for hydro uh, is hired. Um, they're on Lines Bay Avenue, and a, a tree was some trees were taken down, and all the all the material was left on the ground, and there's no cleanup or anything. Um, some of the local residents spotted some of the, the rounds that were down there, and they have picked it up, with the exception of two gnarly pieces. Um, but uh, it, this is this is a recurring theme I, I found. Uh, there's a place just down the street from us on Bayview. Uh, in the ditch, there's a pile of old trimmings and everything from trees that have been trimmed prior to this, um, probably last year, I think. And all the underbrush has grown over them. So if you don't know them there, they're there. You won't see them as you drive by. But I would think that the contractor for hydro uh, should be responsible for cleaning up the area afterwards. It shouldn't be our public works department's responsibility for cleaning up after them. They're big boys. BC Hydro actually has some pretty stiff rules about that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, all of the trimming trucks had a chipper behind it, so. Yeah, we know that it was the hydro contractor who did it? According to this woman, yes. They just didn't put some of the branches in the chipper? So then that's the question. Okay, so they the phone call to BC Hydro and saying, you know, who was awarded this contract and why was it done? Well, they, they, they keep records of that kind of stuff. Oh, we know who it was. We know who it was. Uh, it's the guys in the white truck with the back right. Uh, who are they? Western, Western, Western Tree. Western Tree Services. For the leaky hoses? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, uh, y yes, now we don't have, I mean, they are subject to our bylaws, right, in terms of such bylaws as we have, in terms of adhering to safety regulations and so on and so forth, but if they decide to dump, we've got to catch them and find them, and we don't have somebody to catch them and find them unless they're doing it on a Saturday or Sunday. However, it seems kind of indicative that... Who did it? Because you can see trees cut right under the hydro lines, and there's debris left right under there as well. Well, I mean, moral suasion would play a part here. I mean, these people probably do 25 percent of the work in the village for a private enterprise, so <laughs> that may not happen if we say we don't like you here. Yeah. So, what are you suggesting, Craig? We call them up and tell them to come and clean up. Well, I would, I would suggest well, that a uh, call to hydro would be in order um, because. You, they're their contractors, they're not ours. So I would say go to the one paying the money and yeah. say we're not happy with the contractor you're hiring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and Hydro pays a utility uh, tax, do they not, Peter? For the their facility? Utility tax. I mean we get utility taxes raised on who pays utility tax? I thought it was only Hydro. I'm not sure, I'm not following. Sorry. Well, I don't know what we do with it. Uh, I mean, we couldn't threaten to raise the utility tax because I think it's maxed out right now. But um, I will point out that if we have business license by law, we, they'd have to have a business license to operate in the village. And if they're doing other work, we could revoke their business license unless they clean up after themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Although the, the committee's recommendation was, uh, you know, who's going to enforce that? Uh, the administrative costs for the we far outweigh the revenue. Well, we find out that it's this company and say, come pick it up or, you know, we're going to get... Yeah, but we had to issue them a business license in the first place. I mean, so they have to come in, they have to know about it. And I suppose you put signage at the beginning of the village that says business license is required. Yeah, anyways, um, <coughs> um, I, I'll contact uh, Hydro and uh, see if I can track this down. I've got a, I've got a couple of contacts, so I'll try and track it down and... Um, See if we can get some resolution to it. And we we represent a few contractors that work for Hydro, and believe me, they've got a lot of tough rules, mm -hmm. you know. And it, so, there you phone them; they're going to give you some results. Well, I mean, we're hearing several th uh, concerning things about this particular contractor. They also left their hydraulic fluid all over the top of the road the other day. Has that been cleaned up now? Uh, I s I spoke to Brian Priest, uh, who's in charge of vegetation management for Hydro. Uh, and he is performing an investigation and will get back to us. Yeah, you don't get to walk away from hydraulic fluid sprayed all over the place. I mean, I understand it might happen, it's an accident, but you should at least flag it. Yeah, Come uh, in and they, tell us. they have uh, rules as um, 
Jim. Jim has said, um, and uh, they did not notify uh, Brian Priest of that. So uh -huh. he's uh, okay. Good. He's okay. on it. So we'll leave it in your uh, uh, firm but fair hands. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, parking regulation, Jim. Well, we have. We all have, we have an odd situation in the village of Lions Bay in that we do have a lot of encroachment things going on in the village all over the place. And we have, on Isleview Place, we have pretty much a paved road that goes up, stops at the top of the cul-de-sac and comes down, paved right up to the hedge on the front of our uh, side of our property. Not paved on the other side, but the other side is so gravelly that if someone parks on the hill the wrong way, they're not going to get out of there. So we have limited parking. We've got, there's, there is one, there's two, there's three, there's four of us in that cul-de-sac that use that cul-de-sac for parking, okay? So we've got the Langfords up top of us that now have kids that are all going to have cars pretty soon. Only one of them does now, but the other two are going to have pretty quickly, okay? And we're limited on parking, so we get a warning ticket for parking in front of our hedge, trying to keep enough room for Linnea to park her car there as well, so we can get two or three cars parked along beside the hedge. It doesn't bother us. And, you know, we've gone to the point where I've even offered let the neighbors park in front of our fifth wheel, because we don't use it there. It's not in the, anybody's way, and it's okay. But we still, we get, we get a warning ticket from the village for my wife parking her car right up against our hedge. So, was it within the parking uh, bylaw? What by, what the parking bylaw? Apparently, according to the, the the notice, says that we were parked on the paved section of the road. Well, technically, I guess we were, but the the, the, the if you want to say the boulevard is there, I don't think I think I think the hedge is partly on the boulevard, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I would say that so the pavement goes right up to where the hedge is, and so she was parked on pavement. Yes, but. It had been that way for years, and there was lots of roadway there. Well, I mean, so, uh, yeah. There was no complaint. The bylaw officer d doesn't know uh, special cases, because there are no special cases as far no, as he's concerned. No, I'm just raising an issue saying we need this needs to be dealt with. If it's well, affecting us, it's going to affect other people. Clearly, you know, that was the point of trying to come up with a new parking plan yeah. uh, for, for this summer. And that didn't happen, but uh, as I, I think I, I told I, council, we're going to do I'm not complaining because it's a warning ticket, and it just it raises it to our, to our attention. And yep. so my, I just yeah, I mean, there are going to be special council. cases, yeah. but right now the bylaw says you're allowed to park half on, half your car width on the pavement, and if you're parking your whole car width on the pavement, you're against the bylaw. So then we don't have any parking. So uh, clearly that's the problem, right? So you're, you're doubly screwed. You're in a cul-de-sac. Fire trucks can't. You're not allowed to park in a cul-de-sac. Well, no, that's right. But the 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 one thing about our cul-de-sac is that the fire trucks, when they come down there, the fire hydrants at the bottom. The fire trucks going to back up. They're not going to. So. That doesn't cause a problem. There's good room for fire trucks in and out of the cul-de-sac. Okay, well, so clearly we need to fix up. There is going to be a need for parking. I'll also point out that the that the subdivision bylaw, no, the zoning bylaw, requires two parking spaces on property. Mm -hmm. And if you can't park on your property, you need special council permission. So that would be the solution for that now, to park on the boulevard. Uh, no, that's only extraordinary vehicle, isn't it? We have, we have, I have no problem. We have... We have two parking spots or three parking spots on our property, but the neighbors don't. Yeah. And is there a reason why they don't? Or? Because they've got driveways like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it, yeah. it, so they built a non complying um, uh, parking situation back in the day, pre building inspection day. Yeah, okay, well, we know this and we're going to have to do something. And as you, you know, right now what's happening, of course, is that people's hedges are in the roadway. Mm hmm. Roadway meaning boulevard plus, no, what is it? Uh, highway equals roadway plus boulevard. So yes, it, they're in the highway. It, it's not It's not something that's unusual to the village. No. My, my point no, is, and I, I've raised this before, with, when it comes to boulevards, we know we have a problem with boulevards, and I, my point before was we need to sit with the way it's existing right now until such time as we, we're doing our major changes that we're digging up roads and putting new pipes in. That's the time we have to address that stuff and gain that stuff back. If my hedge is on village property, I don't want it there. 
I don't Ultimately, mind it coming yeah. off. Okay, yeah. but the thing is, I don't know right now. I haven't had a survey, so I don't know where it, where it sits. According to what I see, it's half and half. But well, I I, this is not the most satisfactory solution, but I suggest that we defer this pending a new parking plan. Yeah, and that we'll try and address some of these special Peter, cases. You had said earlier that you thought that this had been dealt I was, with. Anyways. I was thinking it was. I think there was one on Bayview that's similar, where yeah. you got pavement right up. There's a little curb or something, so mm -hmm. you, you can't help but park on yeah. the pavement. Yeah. So it's not the same location. So sorry, no. I, I was mistaken but, in but suggesting that but, earlier. But still, if and so what we've got is we've got, and it's not about me. It's got nothing to do with. It doesn't affect me at all, except mm -hmm. that that the neighbors are concerned mm -hmm. about the parking or lack of parking and they've got driveways like that. We're the only ones that have a driveway like this. Mm -hmm. And you know, so it's like what Well do you I mean do? the 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 big city answer to that is put in parking on your property. Mm -hmm. Get make a plan. Because the rule states no parking off the property. You're not allowed to park on the no let's park on the roadway. End of story. But of course that's been uh, winked at in Lions Bay, so you know it's all part of growing up. Um, the, the parking plan, as I had envisaged it, uh, that, that didn't kind of see the light of day this year, was that you would actually mark a road edge on the pavement. And as long as half your vehicle was on, on, the, on the, the other side of that line, you would be fine. Well, Tarred or not. Yeah. But even that's a bit of a, a fudge, because most of the tarred portions of the roadway are only as wide as they need to be, mm -hmm. not excessive. There's well, very, think, very few of them. I think that when you look at the pavement, coming down that side, you can see a line where they've actually paved extra extra over. So I don't know whether the boulevard or whether it was just, and they probably paved it just to make it easy to keep it clean and, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, nice looking. Right. That's probably what they did. And it's doing so caused yeah. the problem. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. let's not forget that the highway is 30 feet on each side of the road lamps. Now, in many cases, the tarred portion is not going down the road lamps. No. Only you know down here, for example, where the native plant garden is, that road doesn't match the road allowance at all. Mm -hmm. The road goes over private property on both sides, mm -hmm. so there are going to be special cases. Okay, well, the best I can say is uh, no, I, uh, you're going to have to wait. We have no. I, I, it's just discussion point. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I had one more. That sorry, it wasn't on the agenda, but it's a similar thing. So I noticed that the gravel pit was being used by a film company. Um, do we get fee revenue? From that? Uh, big no, trucks coming in and out? We weren't, weren't using our lease area. So but they're within using, the village. They, they're using <coughs> the, the province's area, so they paid the province. As I understand it, I don't think they paid us anything other than uh, maybe been some, some small permit. They get a film permit, right? Yeah. $400. Yeah, there, was, a, there was a small uh, yeah. a film permit. <coughs> yeah. Were they disturbing the community below them or around them? Well, no, because it was on a, I mean, that, that happens a lot. So I was just wondering, I mean, it's a bit of an upheaval, right? So we've got people going up and down that road, wearing and tearing the road, big trucks, 18-wheelers uh, moving. Generators running all night long? Yeah, I mean, I think the reason to do that is it's close to town and, and it doesn't disturb anybody. I mean, is there, is there any money in it for us, I guess is my short question. I don't think we got much. Just the film permit? I think so. 400 bucks. Or whatever it is. Okay, okay. Let's move on to uh, the next item of business. Uh, where eleven B eleven C. Okay, good. Uh, public questions and comments. Um, I few things came to mind while I was listening to all your conversations. One was about the dumping that goes on. Uh, I had had a lot of experience with anti with removing dump material in the native plant garden. It was amazing what I found in that area. But what I noticed, for example, is this quite a bit of material dumped along the, the railway track, at least they used to be. And that's one thing. Cuttings uh, or, or building material? What you have mentioned along the Centennial Trail. Yeah. Uh, you know, these dumped materials create fire hazards. And then there's another place uh, where a lot of dumping happens by residents, and that is on the ministry lot, I think it is a ministry lot that's across from uh, 15 and 10 on uh, South View. Hmm. That, there's a lot of dumping that goes on there regularly. People dump the, the, the grass cuttings uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then at Christmas time, 
there's a bit of dumping that happens sporadically at various places in the village where the Christmas trees end up in the bushes. And what's quite interesting is that sometimes you'll find a, a tree standing upright where there was no tree before. When you look at it, there's no room. <laughs> that happens in the beach, it happens here. So what, what can be done about the dumping on the, along the railway track, for example, or at the site uh, across from number 15 and number 10 on Cloudview? Um, that's a fair that's <coughs> lot could be used, put to good use at some point, I would imagine. But Cloudview or Southview? Southview. 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 Yeah. Southview. Yeah. It's South, I guess it's called Southview. Southview. Yeah. Southview. 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 Yeah. Um, it's just down below the A-frame. Is it municipal? I don't think no. it is. It may not be municipal. Yes, I think. I think it's just the one that did all that work on the corner, that, how, that with all the rocks on the corner there. Yeah. It's just down across the street from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, you know, we have a dumping bylaw. Uh, enforcement, of course, is the issue because we, we don't have a regular a bylaw enforcement officer. Even if somebody did elect to call, the, you know, who would go out? Um, yes, I agree. You know, I mean, this is, it's a difficult one. How do you stop people dumping? Well, there's littering bylaws and stuff in, in other communities, and you have to catch them in the act. Usually bodies and cars now, it's only garbage. Well, anyways, there was another thing that came to mind, and that was uh, the speed on the highway through the village. Is there any way that we as a municipality can monitor speeds of traffic going through our village and even measure uh, decibel levels? Uh, well, that uh, happens to be a project near and dear to my heart. It's not one of the council's priority, but it's something that's personal priority to me as an advocacy thing in, in sort of wearing the mayor's hat. And I, uh, as Peter will attest, we're talking to the MOT at a fairly high level, very seriously about exactly those things, including uh, logging noise and including logging speed. So now the new sign that's been put in north of the village, the one that says slow down, that actually logs speed. Um, we are attempting to get, gather data from the other sensors that they've put up that don't work right now um, to understand as much as we can about the, the traffic issues. And that's one of the reasons that I'm going to see the Minister of Justice uh, in Victoria is to try and start advocating for explicit enforcement of speed through line space. Speeds and then, of course, there's the air brake problem with, uh, with oh, big yeah. trucks. Air brake problem with Again, you know, uh, air brakes, you know, speed, a noise arising from speed, especially from motorbikes, th that can be handled if you can control speed. And, and so what we're looking at is speed radar. Air brakes, you know, you're never going to stop that. Are you about air brakes or engine brakes? Air brakes. Yeah, well, I, I, there's Using of engine braking. It's Air brakes is when they stop. Yeah. 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 I, I know I know somewhere between actually and anecdotally that people are being driven literally insane by the noise because of the extra speed, uh, the, the increased volume, the volume's only getting more. So it's something we're very aware of. Uh, I, I know that's a bit of a nebulous answer, but we're doing yeah. something about it. I remember the ministry people, when we were on the ministry, the highways committee, said that, uh, of course, uh, increased speed increases noise, but there's nothing to educate the people coming through the village that you're driving too fast and they're making more noise. People no, we know. So know we, we have to explain. Why, why is the signage or something to that effect? Well, there is signage. And the, I mean, I don't no, no, the signage just say you're driving too fast, you're making too much noise. Uh, well, for the kind of people who are doing that, the motorbikes, uh, that'll only make them speed up. So there is a new sign. We just put it in. Makes them speed up, does it? We just put in a sign that says slow down. Uh, and I'm waiting to hear what the, what the why, effect is. Why do you have to slow down? Because you make too much noise. It's unsafe. This is a problem that has been going on for years in roadway work sites. Mm -hmm. And the only solutions, there's two solutions that work really, really well. Number one is to have a police officer sitting there with a gun on his side and standing there and watching, which is very expensive and very difficult to do in this day and age. The second one is to use pilot cars to slow people down, stop them, and take them through. You know, we don't want to do that. I'm just saying these are the only things that I know of that actually work. Photo radar was well. Well, photo radar. But photo radar has been outlawed in the province. I agree. I know. Yeah. I know. Well, we are talking to the province about yes. a special kind of photo radar. It's no longer the punishment fine type, and it's no longer spot location. It's it's a 12-kilometer stretch, and you must do 
90 through that stretch, and you measure it at the beginning, measure it at the end. This works very well elsewhere. Uh, we've even been talking to them about putting in a level crossing with a light. Uh, none of these things are going to see the light of day. This is not going to happen tomorrow, but it's something that I'm very aware of. So, uh, thanks. I, I always like hearing that people are also concerned about it because I think we need to do something about it. But it's not one of Council's major priorities. Uh, we've got other things to worry about, but I am continuing to work with them. With, uh, Here's various. a thought. We could charge a toll on the highway, put a stoplight with the boxes where they have to put, the, put their credit card in, their vote, and then they, they speed up. You all have whisker on your well, neck. Yeah. Well, the stoplights through the village w was the discussed when we were on the highway yeah. committee. Yeah. The idea of stopping traffic. That's only going to create more pollution. Well, yeah, exactly. The more pollution and uh, of course noise. more noise mm -hmm. from revving up the first gear. Anyways. The improvements to the highway. One of the improvements to the highway was to get rid of the stoplight on the highway so we didn't have so many accidents there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, unlike Britannia, uh, who does still have a... Uh, uh, and if you see on a, on a bad day, the lineup to get through that light at Britannia is a mile long. Yeah. And I'm afraid. <laughs> Heading home, you mean? Yes. <laughs> okay, so thanks uh, very much, Louis. Uh, any other? This is your only opportunity to speak, Trudy. Susan? Deirdre? Good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now uh, I need a motion to close the meeting to the public on uh, Community Charter Section 91C grounds. Thanks. And a second. And all in favor, oppose. That carries. Okay, so the meeting is now going to be closing. The recordings will be stopped. The public... Okay, recording. So uh, it's 9.19, uh, coming out of closed uh, session, nothing to report. Can I have a motion to adjourn and a second? All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Uh, 9, 18 and a half.